Today I wanted to start a reading vlog. I've never done a reading vlog before. Obviously, if you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. This year, one of my goals was to read more adult fantasy, just because that's the vibe. I don't know, just because, okay? We're not questioning things. So many people on YouTube and on Instagram, just so many people in the world that are alive, living, and breathing, love Robin Hobb. And I have a feeling I'm really gonna love Robin Hobb. I committed, I bought all three books in the first trilogy of you know, her 16 book larger series. So I bought all three books in the Farseer trilogy. I thought it'd be fun to do a reading vlog, reading the whole series. I have to go to work later. I actually have to leave pretty soon, so I need to get ready for that. And I'll probably read a little bit at work. Maybe I'll start a few pages before I leave. Let's show you the books, shall we? Let's show you the books, I have them behind me. So we're gonna start, of course, with Assassin's Apprentice. I don't know. A lot of you have probably already read Robin Hobb, so you're like, okay, I'm over this. I'm not over this. I'm directly on top of this, okay? This is Royal Assassin, so this will be the second book. I'm obsessed with those covers. Who approved the U.S. covers of the Farseer, of all Robin Hobb books, really, and why haven't they been changed yet? Why haven't they been changed yet? I mean, these are gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, so this is Assassin's Quest, which is the third book. Is my cat coming in? No. I get sad, I feel rejected. Just walk by my room, the door's open, Watson. You don't have to come and say hello, that's okay. I'll just cry silently to myself and then come pick you up, cause I'm obsessed. Okay, Assassin's Apprentice. Always let you back in When I begin to get myself together again You are back once more like everything's the same Try to build my walls up, but you're taking them down. It's tearing me apart. I can't pretend. Now I have to get over you again. You said it was the last time. And I'm not too far into Assassin's Apprentice yet. I'm on page 126. I'm really liking it so far. I think it's really beautifully written. It's very slow. It's a very slow read. I'm not complaining about that at all. I can tell that, you know, in the next few books, in the next couple hundred pages, it's the type of vibe where you're really, really gonna be attached to the characters because Robin Hobb's really taking the time to, to, build, to build them up for you. So you really connect to them. You really connect to all the surrounding characters. I hope to get a lot more reading done tonight. And then tomorrow I'm planning on going to Barnes and Noble, and looking around at the books. Yeah, I'm gonna sit at the little Starbucks cafe in there and read tomorrow so that's what we'll be doing tomorrow but try to get a good chunk of this in tonight and then I did order some bookmarks from a shop on Etsy which I will link down below but it's because I want to participate in another readathon over the summer so I had to do this okay I had to do this for my emotional health and well-being the small business is called bookmarks by Alicia and I'll try to link that again down below but it's because of Olivia reads a latte her camp is it camp summer ween or is it just summer ween either way I ordered ordered the bookmark for Olivia Reads a Latte's Summer Ween readathon, um, again, that I really want to participate in. And then this was really cute, so I just had to buy it. And I feel like I always lose or run out of bookmarks and never have them, so I use like a post-it note or a tissue or something. This is so cute. There we go. Super cute. So yeah, I'll link that down below. Life 
that's pouring into you So my friend, let me tell you I was at Barnes and Noble earlier this morning with my mom. I didn't need any more books, but I emotionally needed all of them. I'm really pleased with my purchases. How many books did I did I buy? <laughs> I got five. The first book that I have here, I got this from the psychology section. This just sounded really good. It's called Works of Love, again by Soren Kierkegaard. Most profound, profound examinations of the human heart. A great philosopher conducts the reader into the inmost secrets of love. Yeah, this sounded really interesting, so I bought it. I wanted to get these two plays, so I did. It's as simple as that. I got Cyrano de Bergiac by Edmund Rostand. I've never read the original of this, but I've seen a lot of like movie adaptations, especially the one with, oh my gosh, that really famous man from Cheaper by the Dozen. Man is in love with this woman who's really beautiful, but he's afraid she's not gonna love him because he has a really big nose, so he thinks he's ugly. He starts to send her letters and then she thinks that he's someone else. It's all about love. And then I got A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. This has an introduction by Arthur Miller. I have wanted to read this play for a really long time and I've just never picked it up. I don't know if you guys saw that black and white movie. I haven't seen the full movie. I don't know if my heart can handle it. What is that man's name? Marlon Brando is like too beautiful for words. I don't think I can handle watching the movie, so I might not do it. So we're gonna be safe and read the book instead. And then from the romance section, I got these, I got these. So Katie Roberts, Neon Gods and Electric Idol. I know they're like erotic, romantic, ooh, spicy retellings of like Greek myth romances. That's all I really need to know. That's all I really need to know. Still reading Assassin's Apprentice. I'm like on page 200, so halfway through. What are you doing in there, sir? Hi. I know. Okay. I just finished Assassin's Apprentice. Wow. I tell ya, this book really, really picked up for me. It was still like a slow pace at the end there, kind of. I'm still trying to like absorb what happened. I really liked Burek and Chade, the assassin's teacher, because they were like father figures to Fitz. This book is basically him just being taught a bunch of skills by like a bunch of different people and him being manipulated by literally everyone and questioning kind of who he can trust. But he's also like a 14 year old boy kind of. What is he like 16 or 14? I think he's 14. The majority of this book and there's so much expected of him and he's like has to try to figure it out himself and he's super lonely and trigger warnings for thoughts of suicide by the way and yeah and then at the end he goes on a journey with verity who is like the other prince full spoilers bt dubs if you hadn't already figured that out yet verity's getting married so he goes on like the journey with verity and he is like assigned to kill someone but there was like plot twist plot twist going on and i was reading the last 50 pages like so fast it's not even funny also if i i would fail completely if i was ever in a situation like that and people had to communicate with me through riddles because they were like communicating with each other through riddles <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot solve a riddle if the answer was upside down in small print underneath it like they usually are. I just am like not a riddle master. If, if I was Bilbo Baggins, I would not have made it out of Under the Mountain. Gollum would have gotten me. I just thought it was so good and I'm really excited to continue. I wonder why Burek doesn't like the wit and I, I want to learn more about the skill. I'm sure we will. So I'm going to start royal assassin probably tonight maybe read like the first 10 pages because it's super late um and then obviously i'll be continuing tomorrow <laughs> quick update because it's indecent how much I'm enjoying this book. It's just like not fair that I have to like leave my house and like go do other things 
when I could just be like sitting here reading this book. I really love this book. I love King Verity. King in waiting. I love Prince Verity so much. I've just hit that point, you know what I mean? Honestly, I found that it just takes a little bit of like a romance in a <laughs> in a fantasy book for me to be like tipped over the edge obsessed. Is it just me? I don't think it's just me. Anyways, okay, bye. No matter what I do, I'm coming home to you. And I don't know why, don't know why, don't know why. I'm always feeling homesick. I find that this book is making me so emotional. I'm nearing the end of Royal Assassin. Molly is just making me emotional, okay? Molly is making me emotional. She's a contender for a new favorite character of all time. She could be up there with Dorothea Brooke and Clytemnestra. We'll see how it goes. We'll see if we get even more of her in the story or in the series in the third book. I don't know, man, but the relationship between Molly and Fitz is make, it's making me feel pain. Like, it's making me feel physical pain, and I find, like, I started crying a little bit when I was reading it. Like, real crying. Like, I feel like when Fitz was ruminating on their different types of strength, Molly is more so, like, very obvious defensive like she's been through a lot of pain in her life like she's been traumatized by her father so she wears her strength right on right on the surface of her how fits you know he was taught to basically be secretive and a sleuth and an assassin and how he's much more careful and steady about his protectiveness let me just say i i feel like i identify a lot with molly and i just really love that dynamic and I can feel the pain radi radiating off the pages and Bjork makes a really good point about being a Kingsman and not being able to give patience what she needed and how Molly's making this decision for herself because she's not getting what she needs but it's interesting to read it too from Fitz's perspective because when Molly speaks I'm like yeah girl like Molly's right like that's so painful it's such a painful thing to admit but Molly's right she's not getting what she needs even though she loves Fitz. But we get it from Fitz's perspective, so for the most part, like most of the time, you're like, oh, I want Molly and Fitz to be together. But then when Molly speaks and gives her perspective, you're like, shit, that's a fucking shitty situation, you know? Good for you, Molly, for making that decision for yourself, but yeah, it must be very hard. Verity's not dead? What? What? Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm excited to continue. I'm really loving this book. I'm really s surprised that this original or this initial trilogy in the larger series is the lower rated of Robin Hobb's books. I find that to be peculiar. It makes me excited though to continue. I don't know, I like slower paced things like the rich um, character thoughts and the character development that's very slow but beautifully written and really makes you think about their life and why they're making the decision, decisions that they make and then it makes you think about your life and how things have affected you and the decisions that you make and I just really love well-written fantasy. I think that it's incomparable in its effectiveness on our real lives. Like, first of all, it's complete escapism. And like, on the offset, it's escapism. You get to go to a whole other world, man. And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't funkin' want that? I know I do. There's nothing more rewarding than a good fantasy series. There's nothing more rewarding as a reader, in my opinion. That's my update. Oh, all I know, all I know, all I know is this is where my heart is. Oh, I have seen many places. The beauty never ends Different cities, friendly faces And perhaps I'm going back But I don't have to be Chasing every dream that I have I just finished Assassin's Quest, obviously by Robin Hobb. I wanted to quickly sit down and talk about my feelings. So I think in a previous clip when I was like almost finished with, what's the second one called? Royal Assassin. I was like, 
I don't understand why people don't, why people are like, oh, the first trilogy isn't as good as the rest of the series. Not that I know, I haven't read the rest of the series, but basically not rave, rave reviews. And I was like, I don't understand. This is great. And then, I don't know how I feel about this, okay? So the first like 50 or so pages, I was really vibing with it. I really was vibing with it. We were following Fitz as he was recovering from basically him dying in the second book. He was trying to learn how to live as a man after he lived as a wolf wolf for so long. Burek was taking care of him and we had Chade come in and, and see what was going on. And I really loved, I loved that. And then it totally crashed and burned and went downhill for me from there. Then Burek leaves and he's like, oh, you need to become your own man. And he's like, great, cool, peace out, bye. Fitz is like on this journey quest to kill Regal. And then I guess Burek comes back and sees like a rotten body and thinks it's Fitz because of the pin. Listen. I understand the angst situation, but like, if you're alive, you tell people. I don't understand. I sincerely don't understand why the whole book, even up to the fucking end, he insisted, Fitz insisted, insisted on making sure Burek and Molly thought he was dead. I'm like, dude, you're still freaking alive. Like, like, just tell them you're fucking alive. You can deal with the awkwardness. As adults, okay? As adults. But I just, I'm just, I'm upset. I had coherent thoughts like midway through this book and closer to the end and then I just don't. I just don't anymore, okay? So we're just going with it. I'm just mad and Molly had a baby? Nettle? It's like, if you have a child <laughs> somewhere in the world, you just go say hi to the kid, you know? I just feel like that's really cowardly and shitty. I just re I really didn't like it. And I could see it coming from a million miles away that Molly and Burek were gonna, you know, like get together. But I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I felt kind of weird about it. I just felt kind of weird about it. That being said, I loved Burek as a character and obviously I loved Molly. My total ardent love for Molly kind of went out the window. Not that I dislike her, but that love wasn't built upon and it just kind of fizzled out in this book. Still respect her. I feel like the situation that Molly and Burek were in, it couldn't have worked out any other way. Like Robin Hobb kind of fit those pieces together well, I think. But like, really, did you? I mean, like, did you? Burek raised Fitz. You know, Burek raised Fitz. Burek is Fitz's dad. That's how I see Burek. And now he's like his grandchild's dad, basically. I don't know. It just didn't... I just... I just was... Ugh, I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. I was very dissatisfied with this book. I also felt like the pacing for pretty much the whole book, like... Of course, after the 50 pages when Fitz... Burek leaves and Fitz, like, goes on his quest to become a man. I didn't like the pacing. I thought that this book was way too long. <laughs> I thought this book was way too long. I don't feel like anything really happened. This could have been a lot shorter. It was like 840 pages. And I'm not, com I, I like long books. If you're saying something, you know, if you've got a lot to say, say it. I'm here for it. I bought the book. I saw the size. Entertain me. Entertain me. I am not entertained. It's like the first 50 pages and the last 50 pages, I could get on board with the pacing. Okay, not the plot points, but the pacing. Like, there's like a big battle at the end, right? With like those, the elderlings, the dragon statues, and it's just Fitz and his wolf, fave bond ever. Also, what the f happened to the fool? He just, poof, vanished. I just hate how this book ended. I can't even think straight and talk straight. I didn't like it. I didn't, didn't he like it? One bit. What was I even saying? I'm just frustrated. I'm frustrated, man. Oh yeah, where'd the, where'd the fool go? The fool was my favorite character in, in like this book. Yeah, it was Fitz and the wolf and they battled and then they, what, it took them six years to get back? Cause you got like a, the last chapter was like Fitz, you know, as an older man, older, 
not old, writing his history. So it goes back to like present day that we get at the first chapter and the last chapter. And it just felt like one of those, you know, at the end of like, you know, at the end of movies where it's like 10 years later, what are the characters up to? And it's like, okay, great, but that's not like the story. I, I actually, I don't really like it when movies do that. Sometimes I do, sometimes, sometimes I really don't because I just feel sad. I just feel sad. I'm like, how did you get there? What's going on? Where did we mess up? How could we have fixed this and made this better? I was just sad. How does the series continue? Do we follow, because I, I honestly have no idea, obviously. Do we follow new characters? What's up? I just hated how the end of this, I would have, I would have been less angered if this didn't end like, eight, ten years later, where Fitz is like living as, his words, a hermit, <laughs> same, and his wolf, which I love, I love the wolf, and the fool's just gone, and Verity's just gone, I was just dissatisfied, we don't get to see any more Ketrickin, I'm sure, actually, this is my prediction, we follow Ketrickin's baby, or Nettle, oh my, or both of them, because they're like similar in age, See, that would be interesting. But I don't want to see Molly and Burek. It just bothered me. It just really bothered me. It just bothered me. You know, with fantasy series, how I was saying before, they're super rewarding. They are. But there's a catch-22 with that, too. It's like you spend all this time, these characters, and with this writer and in these worlds, while it has the propensity to be incredibly rewarding, it also has the propensity to be incredibly disappointing. And I'm just disappointed. I felt... Though, like, while I was reading this, if we're talking about good things, I felt there was a lot of philosophical discussion or things to be ruminated on, a lot about the animal inside the human and the socialized human, which I think about that a lot, right? Like, we had the forged ones, we have the wit, and we have um, the skill. And the skill is where humans can basically, like, hyper-empathize with each other and, like, manipulate each other depending on the person who has the power and is doing the stuff. And then we have the wit, which people, like, don't like. They, like, talk shit about it and they think it's weird, but, like, obviously those people are the nicer people. Clearly. I didn't meet- we didn't meet one bad person who had the wit. And it was definitely the coolest part. Like, it definitely supported the group on their journeys the most. It was just all around positive, positive vibes. If I could bond with a wolf, <laughs> I would. I would. Okay. The forged ones had like no ability to empath- they had nothing going on. They couldn't be sensed with the wit or the skill. I, I just, I just found that interesting. Um, that whole concept and also at the end there was like you basically give your feelings to the dragon You know that whole thing like oh you're you, you can't take away your memories and your pain because that's what makes you who you are Kind of a thing I really like that the whole skill road was you know like a huge metaphor for life like you're being challenged mentally attacked constantly by yourself by others other people are making you mentally attack yourself, basically. And it's like that journey to life. It's not that I like didn't, okay, I didn't like it, but it's not like I like actively hated it by any means. Like I wanted to love it. I was disappointed, disappointed in you. Back to what I was saying about the skill and the wit and being a forged one, like the whole thought about the animal inside the human and the socialized human and, and which is better and which is virtue kind of a thing or where does virtue and goodness lie in that spectrum? These are my thoughts, okay? I feel like Robin Hobb was really ruminating on this concept the whole trilogy, and I really, I fussed with it. I vibed with it, right, Watson? And I feel like how I was reading it, the, the people with the skill, like, would be too far in, in, like, the socialized human, you know, where, like, only people in, like, the royal family had it, in the court, it was all like political, people manipulating people, again, depending on who had the power. And then we have the forged ones who are completely in the opposite direction, where they have no ability to empathize or think about, like plot anything or empathize with anyone. And they uh, thrive off of, or, or their drives are only for their immediate needs, like food, sex, shelter, clothes, whatever the heck it is that they want. Then we have the wit who, I, what I feel like falls directly in the middle, you have that ability to empathize, but you also have that animalistic honesty and truthfulness within you. Like 
you know how to like it's it's a peacefulness is is I can't find the right words but it's a peacefulness that's, that brings me back to the beginning of this well where he was half wolf half man basically and he had lived as a wolf before this it's like the life is so peaceful and calm and just like that loving companionship that they have like the wolf is very much so all about pack that was mentioned a lot i felt like there was, were also you know there's lots of themes in here about needing people needing family um, needing support you can't really do anything without support you can't do anything by ourselves really I mean it you need to be a strong person yourself and have drive yourself but you're not gonna get that far by yourself like in fantasy books and in life okay I really liked that I, I did really love the female characters in this I loved all the characters they were very richly formed very nuanced unique so those are my main thoughts I don't know what I want to rate Assassin's Quest. Maybe like a 2. Maybe like a 2.5. Probably more like a 2.5. Maybe a 3 if I'm feeling generous, but we know it's a low 3. So Assassin's Apprentice got 4 stars. Royal Assassin got 5 stars. And then this like a 2.5, man. 2.5. Bad pacing. I just feel like people are walking around a lot and not really doing anything important. Like, it's not even that interesting. Like, we don't even have people, like, really attacking them that much, you know what I mean? Not that I want that, I just, I just didn't really feel like anything happened. I feel bad when I say stuff like that because this author, Robin Hobb, is obviously incredibly talented and, like, I cannot do what she did. So commend her, thank you so much, love you, I'm gonna continue, but I'm just as a reader, like, crying you know alrighty thanks for watching my Robin Hobb Farseer trilogy reading vlog have you read this trilogy I'm hoping you have because I spoiled a lot spoiled a lot in this so yeah I'm assuming you're gonna say it gets better because that's what everyone online says but does it get better what's your favorite series within the series what's your favorite book if you have one who's your favorite character oh my gosh I love talking about this were you pissed at the end not pissed were you disappointed at the end of Assassin's Quest let me know give me some support let's like start a support group because I'm sad I'm so sad anyways Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Have a great afternoon, wherever you're living, wherever the sun is in your sky. Yeah. Okay. Bye.